Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Bulls, Blazers and Back Chat. It's episode three with me, your host, Scants, and I'm obviously joined by my co-host, Catty. And then there's a very big smiley face um, at the bottom of the screen, which is our very special guest, Mr. Stuart Haslam. Hello, Stuart. How are you? Good evening and uh, hello to the uh, millions of viewers. Yep, thank you for having me. Very privileged and honoured to be a guest on your show. Looking forward to it. Fantastic. How are you, Marcus? How are you doing this week? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, it seems like a, a long couple of weeks since we uh, since we grilled Sam Winter. The snow's come and gone. The, warm, the warmer climates are here and Stewie has been to I mean, Haslam is here. So, uh, yeah, very good to have Stewie on board. Good stuff. Good stuff. This is all a bit awkward for the three of us because it's the second time we're doing this due to some technical difficulties from uh, <laughs> from Marcus Cattell. He's actually he's actually taken his jumper off. It must have got a bit bit hot his side of things. Hot. But hopefully we're technically cracking on and all good. Stu, how's lockdown been, mate? You, you just said you moved moved house recently. Yeah, moved in January. Um, started a new job in October as well. So my life hasn't really changed too much in that I'm uh, still working all the hours of the days. And so for Hannah, homeschooling with the boys has been a bit of a challenge to say the least. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's, it's you- okay. I'm in a lot better place uh, this time around, I think, than the first lockdown. But yeah. Good stuff. You, you must be in charge of PE at home at least. <laughs> Yes, that is true. Like I said, uh, on our first uh, uh, edit, we um, we got a dog as well in March. So he's getting well exercised, so trying yeah. to drag the kids out. But uh, yeah, it's not always the easiest with uh, PlayStations involved. And uh, that's the only form of communication it, with their friends at the moment. Is it so, Fortnite? Yeah. Is Fortnite the big one? It is, yeah. Uh-huh. It's, uh, I think I've threatened to put a hammer into the PlayStation <laughs> at least 50 to 100 times. But uh, no, it, look, it's, it's, it's the way the kids get yeah. the chance to talk to their friends. So you kind of have to bite yeah. the bullet and just try and get them outside. You, you weren't used to do that on the old N64 though, were you, Marcus? But N64, that was, uh, was like Mario Kart, Diddy Kong Racing, <laughs> all, all the big games. games. Golden Eye. Golden Eye, yeah. Super Mario. Anyway, a um, little bit of a format for this week. We've got a bit of an update, a bit of rugby stuff, um, Stortford Wires to talk about and a couple of other things going around the club. We're obviously going to be diving into Stuart Haslam uh, and some of his rugby career, uh, if you can call it that, and stories and memories. It's definitely, we can call it a career now. We won't be too harsh on you already, mate. Um, and then obviously we're Six Nations, no Six Nations this weekend, but we are going to have a quick review of what was round two last weekend, if we can cast our memories back. Um, and then we'll be finishing up the show. So Marcus, do you want to give us a little update rugby side of things? There's maybe a couple of, well, certainly one announcement that people might yeah. have seen through, through Twitter and things. Yeah. So we've been working uh, behind the scenes uh, with a number of clubs and, um, and uh, yeah, so we're, we're hoping that with lockdown being uh, eased and the RFU allowing us to get into some rugby, uh, we've planned an East Angular Cup, which will be played between ourselves, Bury St Edmunds, uh, Cambridge and Westcliff, which will hopefully start in April time. But again, that's all down to uh, when things are allowed to, to start again. But um, yeah, fingers crossed that we'll get some games in. There's obviously a couple of derby games there and some teams... Uh, in Berry and Cambridge, who we've had some good tussles with. We haven't seen Westcliff for a few years, but they're uh, they seem to be um, sort of pushing in the right direction in the in the Nat Two South League. Is uh, there so um, hopefully? Go on, mate. Yeah, is there any kind of like final start date that we've heard of that? I'm saying if well, we've kind of said all... that we're going to probably play till the end of May. Yeah, um, and and then we want a bit of a break, well, three or four week break before we start pre season. So potentially, yeah, end of May. So we need three or four weeks to, to train. So I'm, I, I don't want to specify a, a date, but I'm thinking if we don't start training properly by mid to late April, it's not going to be a goer. All right, but we will, but we will try and train, and you know, we'll, we we've decided as a coaching team that any kind of rugby activity, whether it be training or so yeah. adaptive, adaptive games will, will sort of um, hold us in a better position for next year. Um, yeah. 
And I'm sure the boys are gagging to get back up there, not just first team, I'm sure the development team, the Colts, the women, even the Minion Youth uh, are, are really keen to um, to get back up the club and, uh, yeah, throw a ball around to see everyone and, and get back to a bit of normality, I suppose. Stewie probably got some some new boots for Christmas that he's 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 get wants to get out of the packet. Absolutely, got the Puma Kings. There is go. Probably you, dusted them off. Are you not a predator man or a, a World Cups? No, I had World Cups when I was younger. I, I had some high tech Pro Kings. I think Paul Merson used to wear them, and they were I like the daddy. Don't even know who that is. <laughs> it was in black and white. Um, but uh, yeah, no, Puma Kings, they're the, they're the ones, the go to ones. Stuff. So we, we're still holding out a bit of hope anyway, then, Marcus, that yes, mate, yes. Might yeah, be, but, like, uh, maybe, maybe not spectators, but I'm sure, sure someone amongst us might be able to sort out a live stream of the game for the fans or something, maybe. Right, definitely. But also, there's also another date for the diary, which is Monday, the 31st of May, which is the bank holiday weekend. Uh, if we can't get any rugby in, I think there's more chance of playing cricket. So uh, we've organised a rugby club versus cricket club ex- exhibition game, the Dano Coys Cup, as we're going to call it. Um, so a, a short trip down Cricket Field Lane. Um, we're going to take on, yeah, Stortford Cricket Club in a in a game on a on Bank Holiday Monday. Um, so yeah, that should be a, a good um, day out for the family yeah. and um, hopefully a bit of competitive sport. Marcus, yeah. we used to have a cricket team in. Uh, like the 90s I think and we used to play a lot of the village village teams every uh, every Saturday um, throughout the summer and it was quality because obviously the rugby club generally have quite a few decent cricketers mm. and uh, yeah we used to play the likes of Broad Oak, the Heath, Farnham and a few others yeah it's good oh. fun. So, so there, there is, some, there is some cricket history I want to look, we'll find some school books or something be interested to see some names in there who, who did what but I don't think we ever lost a game. We um because we had the likes of Nick Doyle's quite decent. Um Floyd E. Um You were scoring, mate. Or drinking, watching. Oh, the, we did we the thing is we we didn't take it too seriously and I'm I'm not sure the village teams appreciated it all the time because we'd kind of cock about a bit, but yeah, no, good times. Anyway. So you're going to be you're going to be player manager for Marcus for that. Have we got a have people going to impress you with their cricketing skills up at the club? Uh, well, yeah, there's been a few lads, and obviously I know yourself uh, being a matching green boy. There's uh, we've got a few cricketers in there, like Stewie said, cricket and rugby tend to come hand in hand. Got a few Felsted boys in the ranks, so I'm sure they've uh, held a cricket bat in their time. So I'm sure we can piece together a uh, a half decent eleven to take to, to take down the road and uh, you know sh- show our cricketing skills. Yeah, yeah, and certainly if there isn't any rugby, I think that'd be be a good way to get get some of the fans. Obviously, a lot of the rugby rugby supporters are, are supporters of the club as well, of cricket club as well. So, yeah, um, yeah, some sport, some sport will be great, whether it's rugby or cricket. Um, and then finally, on a thing to announce is James Ayrton <coughs> about to take on, or he's, I don't know when he starts. Does anyone know when he's starting on the ultra triathlon? Which I think he's completely nuts to do. Yeah, I think he's training now. I think he's going to be in it's June or I think it's July. I start of July. I think it is the day. Okay. It's a set day where he'll do all the event, all the distances on one day. Yeah. But, um, I've written it down here. It's a two and a half mile swim. It's 112 miles on a bike, and 20 and a, and a marathon to run. So, which is I know I don't know if he's ever done an ultra triathlon. I know he's done some triathlons or some marathon stuff before, but um, what a task to take on, and he's doing that. Um, raising funds for BSRFC Joker, um, which is obviously very close to the club and, and a, an important theme and, and charity to, to raise for, especially at the moment. So um, well done, James. I know he's got a Just Giving page. Um, so yeah, I think there's a, a link up on the website. If you click on the website, it's the top one up there at the moment. So a little plug for him. Please go and donate. I know I still need to. Stuart, you're going to donate. £50, pounds, is it? Or you're saying £100 pounds you're going to donate just before the call, weren't you? <laughs> Sorry, you're cutting out, Jack. One hundred. Get in. You heard it here. Hundred pounds from Stuart Hudson for James. Well done, Stuart. <laughs> Good stuff, mate. We all heard it here first. Um. So yeah, that's about it, really. Stortford wise. Um. 
there's no other general so I guess we are heard tomorrow night's the announcement so we might have a bit of an idea what's going on but um, good yeah, stuff keep, keep an eye on the website I think with the website with all training and, and activities it will be uh, sent out pretty quick via all the various um, <clears throat> communication links so uh, hopefully be at the club soon good stuff now for the interesting part <laughs> the very interesting part Stuart <laughs> Where do we start with you, mate? Where does where does where does rugby begin for you? I don't know if you played when you were a real youngster. Is it school or is it up the club or? It's um, pretty much been at the club since I was uh, two years old, watching the old man play, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, couldn't wait to get started. So we were back then. It was under eights, but I was just turned five, and I was playing with the the under eights because we just had a had one team then it was full contact no tags or anything like that and uh yeah just absolutely loved it from day dot and uh yeah worked my way through um I went to Newport who were absolutely rubbish at rugby and um I had Fersey with us as well so he was the only half decent player there and uh then we, we somehow made it into the Cambridgeshire County team which is equally poor um but uh, yeah, so they um, managed to get in the first team at, in what year? Year ten is that the fourth year? Year eleven? Um, but uh, yeah, always kind of playing the year older than I was, which is good. Just means that you kind of get your tackling technique right because you're playing against a lot of bigger guys. Yeah. And then um, yeah, worked our way over to the high school, and uh, Fezzi followed us as well which was uh, to be expected and uh, the two of us joined boys high and uh, captain the school first 15 there which was good played county and all that malarkey nice stuff then, uh, nice stuff so 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 i guess your you sort of your main school rugby was really um sort of bit of stuff i, can't, I don't know i can't see any fa- I don't have photos up at boys high that maybe go that far back i guess so, um, they're black and white i can tell that. <laughs> No, I've seen was, photos, um, of, it's photos of Tom Coleman and things like that in the clubhouse, but not not you. So no, no, that's that's for a good reason as well. Have you got Have you got any? Do you reckon? Have I what? Sorry, got any rugby photos in your school playing days? Um, no, I don't. I think Fairsy's got one will. Time Fairsy, of it. Fairsy will still have them up in the loo, won't he? Yeah, he he would definitely be able to dig a few out. But no, it was you know terrible kits, all different coloured shorts, that kind of thing. But to be fair, we, we just started, the high school started to take their rugby more seriously um, with Mr. Shaw and a few other coaches. And we we had, I think we beat, um, we didn't beat Campion. We got spanked by them in the Daily Mail Cup. But um, Cooper's, was it? Cooper's school? Cooper's Coburn, yeah. Yeah, so we beat them, I think, for the first time in the school's history. And then we started to beat them regularly when, you know, the likes of you guys start to work your way through and then the fixtures got a lot harder. But yeah, it was, um, we started to progress and play tough schools round about when we joined. Excellent. And then you're sort of, <coughs> go on, Marcus, do you want to say something? Yeah, I, I was going to jump in. If we, I think, fast forward a little bit, um, not many people will know, or a lot of people will know, because I know you've told them a few times, but you've actually played in the top uh, tier of English rugby for a well-known team called West Hart Hartlepool. <laughs> I think they're now playing in North West, uh, North One East. I think so. Obviously, they've gone down a few leagues. But tell us a bit about your top-flight career. Um, so, how I got there. So Sam obviously touched on his Loughborough days last the other week, and uh, how he didn't really get in the freshers team. And it was the same for me. I went up there, tried for the freshers, and because didn't go to the right school. They just kind of dismissed us. Now, my housemate happened to play for Bristol first team at the time. So he was encouraged to go down to Leicester and uh, trial with them. So I just piggybacked and said, can I come as well? And so I played a couple of years, uh, um, Leicester Tigers 21s. And then from there, I, I went down to New Zealand, played in Auckland for um, a season and then made the Auckland Dun 21s team. And whilst I was there, I was coached by... Uh, an ex All Black called Terry Wright, who was an um, absolute gem of a guy. And uh, <laughs> the team I played for were literally unbelievable. We had, you know, there were some guys that went on to play. Sonny Parker, who played for Wales, a um, couple of other guys um, were there and who played for like Samoa and Tonga. 
But anyway, we, we were undefeated. I was kicking well all season and I was just, it was so easy because you're surrounded by decent players and then Matt, they made me look good. Do you, and, reckon uh, they, uh, do you reckon they go on podcasts and go, there was this gun, <coughs> gun that we had this gun English 10 called Stuart Haslam? Um, definitely. <laughs> the, the Facebook messages I get from them all the time, it's just, you know, it's, it's borderline harassment. But, um, but we, um, yeah, so I came back and at the time, Mike Brewer, the ex All Black, was coach of West Hartlepool, who were a historically decent team. And they were in the championship and they were looking for a, a fly half, kicking fly half. Um, Terry Wright knew Mike, said that an English lad's come back, give him a go, went up there for a trial, managed to get a contract. And um, yeah, I was in the squad for um, a year and we got promoted into the premiership. Now, the truth is that I was a proper bin juice. You know, I only played four games. Um, I was only young but they realised I was absolutely rubbish and got rid of myself and two other full-time players and brought in, uh, I think, an Irish international, Mullins or someone like that, I think his name was. And uh, they lost every game, I think, in the Premiership, so got relegated and sadly the club spiralled there down because they sold the ground and this, that, the other, which is uh, really sad because it is a... A really historical ground, um, ground and club, yeah, real shame. But yeah, I lived the dream for a year. Yeah, um, great story, yeah. Stu. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that much. You know, I know you sort of well, but I didn't know that that much about you. And I guess you you're riding riding quite a wave there for a while, of playing some some pretty top level. What is you know you know as a young professional or playing in New Zealand, you've been playing. You know, you must have played with and against some some top blokes like you mentioned there and. Yeah, you must have loved that. It was a bit of a wave to ride quite early on. Oh, and it was, I was literally living the dream. I loved it so much. I was paid peanuts. I think I was on nine grand a year. I could overdraw in every month. But there, did, there used to be a game called Jonah Loma Rugby. Yeah. And what was, what was crazy is that, you know, in between training sessions, we'd go back to the house and, you know, you play the computer games. Now, three of my teammates... At West were on the Jonah Lomi rugby. We had Mike Brewer, who was the All Black. Um, then we had Tunu Alatia, who was the Samoan captain at scrum half. And then a guy called Mark Giacchieri, who played second row for Italy, um, Australian Italian. And uh, so obviously they always had to be their teams. And uh, yeah, just just mental, you know. Um, but yeah, this um, it was it was great. But I was very much a player that was um, looking to improve. And sadly, my time came to an end just purely because the team were rubbish and money ran out. But yeah, could have uh, stuck out for a bit longer, potentially. Yeah, so I just sort of, so dropping out from from that side, you lost the contract there. And where did you go from there? Did you come back to play at Stortford or were you, try, were you, were you still so trying they, to pop? So how I was 22, nearly 23. I had zero work experience and that was something I was trying to push um, at Hartlepool. But then they were going to put me on loan to Doncaster, I think. Doncaster above Darlington. I can't remember. It's one of those two. And uh, I'll be honest with you. I I, um, I thought, no, do you know what? I'm, it was a bit of a reality check. I thought, I've had a go. I don't think I'm good enough realistically so came home back to Stortford and played with my mates and uh loved it good story mate good story but okay that's interesting you 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 didn't want to chase a dream somewhere else or I suppose if the money was pretty poor to start with it wasn't like you could chase chase some money at a club it was really more about where you were playing your rugby it was a bit, yeah, because I was the other end of the country. I was always skint, having been a student and then obviously not earning money, much money playing rugby. But I don't know. I just, I love Stortford so much. And I thought, you know, I've given it a go. I think I didn't really back myself to um, to really go for it. And uh, yeah, it's, I think it was just, right, am I good enough or should I go home and make an, a hopefully make an impact yeah. at my big, own team. Big, big fish, small pond stuff. <laughs> yeah. Although yeah, that's not, yeah. I, I, you could see it that way. That's not Come how back. 
No, I wanted it to be, but Come it was back. more just my best pull, mates, you know? Yeah, Fairzy, pull some strings. Fairzy. Come yeah. reunite with Fairzy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Fairzy was off, he was off playing some rugby elsewhere and stuff as well, wasn't he? So did you come back to the club at a similar time or? I think he had one more year after me. Um, Cause it's weird. I always kept coming back, you know, in between. Cause I was also on loan at Bishop Stalford a bit at Hartlepool. Cause I okay. asked them if I, when you're registeredly reg- registered, then I could be able to put on loan. So I just just come back and play the odd game as well. But no, Fezzi just it was brilliant, you know. If you, if you saw what he was like at Newport and, you know, he had it tough and he really knuckled down and that is someone who's applied himself, got the best out of his ability, you know. And I think that reflects... <laughs> He definitely has. If if you look at him now, he's so focused and like yeah, militant. Everything is it militant uh, yeah. in everything he does, and that's why he's, he actually weighs less than me. He does now, doesn't he? So I mean, you've you, you've got some 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 credentials to the name there, but I mean, you've got some Stortford credentials. You're obviously a first team player. I think a season at captain. Um, you're now a social team player. You're an ex Blues coach. You're a Minis parent. You're a summer ball organizer. Um, you've got quite a few few strings to your bow now. Um, but so, where did you start for first team group? What sort of what league were they playing in when you were starting that? And sort of where did it end up when you were when you finished playing? So um, they were in London to North, I think. I think, um, and. I was kind of in sixth form, lower sixth, I think, or upper sixth. I was, um, I've been training with the first team because we used to be able to play men's rugby in the backs at the age of 15, I think it was. So I've been playing like with Joe Clark, who used to just pluck these youngsters out from anywhere and say, come, have you bought your boots? Come play for fists. Because I watched the first team most Saturdays with my dad. And if we were away, I'd always take my boots. And so I was playing for the men's teams. But then... I was training on Tuesdays and Thursdays, probably from about 16 with the first team. And then, so like getting involved. And then Robbie Kerr and Tubby kind of gave me my debut, which was an away game against Coventry. And uh, I'd, I, they put me on the wing and I was marking an ex England winger. I think he had, had like one or two caps. And uh, I was not, <laughs> I never had gas. Anyway, we got beaten something like 80 points to five. Nice. And um, fortunately, the only try was scored by me. It was an inception. <laughs> and I literally caught it and they, they caught me within seconds. I kind of had to then go for the corner flag and scurry down there. But yeah, no, it's good times. And uh, What would you say is your best memory in a Stortford shirt or, or, or as a Stortford member? What's, what's your best memory? There's, winning the Colts Cup was good, you know, because you're doing that with your, your good mates. That you've yeah, Colts, the age Colts memories are pretty that good for me as well. Too. It's just it's something about being that age, isn't there, and playing with all your yeah. mates while you're still at school. That um, yeah, that was that was that was good. Um, we beat the Met Police in what was the National Cup in the first team in front of a, a massive crowd back then. Um, I think I was boy yeah. that day. I think I was ball boy. I think I was ball oh, boy. Oh, were you? Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think Floyd scored the winning try in literally last in extra time or something like that. But no, it, it has to be when we eventually won the league in 2003 04, I think. Um, over in Cambridge, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was a dreadful game. We were we were rubbish, but we scraped over with you know trying the last minute and the kick and stuff. But at the same time, as a spectator, when um, you guys won the league, Marcus, and you scored near the end. And I was when you came, jumped in our arms and stuff. Um, that was pretty special as a yeah. spectator and seeing like you boys that had kind of grown up with us as we'd stepped down and seeing you perform that. That was pretty special as well. So there's, yeah, a, there's a few there. That was a good day, that wasn't it? That was your 10 year um, anniversary, and then that's not yes. far off. That's not far off our 10 years in a couple of years' time. So that'd be you boys 20, our, our boys 10. That'd be a big Saturday. Yeah, yeah, but that that was that, that was class as well. Yeah, so there's been a few. But also, Scants, when the Blues won the um, cup a few years ago, when yeah. I was with Fairzy, honestly, yeah. I, I think I welled up that day. Yeah, because I I absolutely loved that. So that that was uh, meant a lot to me as well. Yeah, 
I mean, you had I a did. quick quick foray into coaching there. I mean, how long did you do with the Blues? Because, I mean, that's where I really got to know you um, as a bloke. Um, obviously, when you and for people who don't know, I don't know how many years ago it was now, but you and sort of the Blues were at a sort of a crossroads and you and Fairzy came in to coach us for what was maybe, did you do a couple of seasons? And maybe obviously Fairzy's done done a lot longer, but really, you know, sort of guided the Blues um, into really the far more obviously professional outfit and far more successful outfit that it's become become now. Yeah, I had nothing to do with that. That was Fairzy. I, I was probably quite the opposite. I was just there to kind of be part of the team and like have fun and just muck it. I was literally, again, just water boy. Um, and then chucking the ball about getting involved where I can. So, um, yeah, I, that, I only did a season. Loved oh, it. Wonderful. Absolutely loved it. But it was, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, all day Saturday, coaching the kids on Sunday. And when you've got a wife and young family, um, and I was pretty much just well, a water boy. I was, I, I, as much as, um, you know, I know a little bit about the game, I, I didn't really do any coaching. I was just kind of there for morale and bonding and having fun and yeah. keeping. I think you're doing yourself a bit of a, a disfavour there, mate. I think you're right in the sense that you know, it, you and Fairzy came as a bit of a duo, and Fairzy was the coach, and you, like you say, you're a bit of a cheerleader, cheerleader. But you know, we were all sort of older guys, and we didn't need necessarily need coach now to raid club. We just sort of, you know, you directed <laughs> us and. Um, you you just gave us some of the information you thought you needed rather than being overcoached. You know, it, there's nothing worse than, especially with with coaching, or, you know, being a player and being coached by people. You don't want to get overcoached. You don't need to be told what to do all the time. And I think, um, yeah, that was an enjoyable year that we had with with you and Fersey doing that. And but you're now, I suppose, imparting some of your wisdom onto the much younger generation. Um, try, trying to. Um... You know, my son in particular doesn't rate me as a coach and kind of questions everything we do, but that's to be expected, I believe. Um, but no, it's, it's, I just, I just love, I mean, our age group, we've got something like 70 kids just in our age group. It's massive. And all I want is for the children to turn up on a Sunday, want to come back next week, like rugby, have fun and have smiles on their faces. Now, I don't think, well, we know not all of them, maybe a quarter of them will carry on playing rugby when they're older. But if, as long as they like the club, like rugby, then we've kind of ticked a box there. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. The parents, and the parents come to the summer ball, then, you know, that's, that's, that's the yeah. winner. Well, that's round. a banker. <laughs> it is when Stewie Hasson's organising it, isn't it? Fun time. <laughs> Fun time, yeah. Um, Stewie, um, who's your, I, I know I sort of text you in the week, but, Best player you played with and against for Stortford? For Stortford? Um, best player I think we played with was a guy, a South African guy called, he was a number eight called Willem. Um, One name. One name. Willem Viam. <laughs> and uh, he just was a monster. Sadly, his knees were ruined. And uh, I think he lived on Ali Luke's farm and we eventually talked him into playing for us. And he honestly was just, the best. He went on to play possibly for Treviso or Benetton or someone like that. I think we um, used to Italy. watch him in the clubhouse when he was in playing in Italy and he was playing in the Challenge Cup, like the second yeah. tier. And they were like, oh, that's, he used to play at Stortford playing for Treviso or someone yeah. like that, he said, yeah. He was just, he was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, um, but yeah, he's probably, probably the best player at Stortford. Playing against, um, pardon me, Lee Harron, um, you yeah. know that he played at Harlow and then he played at OAs. Yeah, um, he was just awful to play against. He's a lovely bloke, but he was just what position was he? He was scrum half or hooker, um, <laughs> and he he was like I think he was like what? under eighteen judo champion. Swap at half time champion. Yeah, and he just was niggly, nasty. Always talking to the ref, always giving you chat, and uh, but a top bloke off the pitch. He um, he came up and did some coaching with us when we had Pete Engledale at the club. He did yeah, some, that's right, yeah. some clear out stuff and a, some of the sort of crocodile roll stuff, which I think we might talk about in a bit. But yeah, he, he was a top, really nice guy. 
um, and just sort of he helped us evolve our sort of ruck out, clear out technique and just sort of springing up off the floor and jackaling, things like that. On the pitch, though, he was shocking. Horrible. Horrible piece of work. But <laughs> that's what made him so good. Nice. Good stuff. So, um, should, we, should we finish with some quick fire questions? Scan yeah. Them? Yeah, we've got some quick fire questions. So, we thought we'd try and liven it up, whether it li livens it up or not. I don't know. But <laughs> you got rules are you answer straight away, obviously. So, swimming pool or beach, Stu? Beach. Indian or Chinese? Chinese. That's takeaway, not women, Stu. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, Chinese. <laughs> Scrunch or fold? What? Scrunch or fold? Scrunch. Oh. Uh, scrunch. No, oh, I don't know. Definitely a scruncher. You're a messy bloke. B day. Aren't you? B day. <laughs> Lager or cider? <laughs> Lager now. Started off as cider. Lager now. Chip and chase or catch and drive? <laughs> try. Try. Chip and chase all day long. Uh, Owen Farrell or Johnny Wilkinson? Johnny. Cotton traders or skin tight? Uh, skin tight. <laughs> when this is, I'm thinking if I was playing right now, cotton traders all day long. Skin skin tight out in Dubai though, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, right, Lions tour or World Cup final? Lions tour. Stuck in a lift with Rob Fares or Martin Crowe? Uh, Fairsy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> oh, that's a no-brainer. I'd probably come out and build plastic cutlery for a year. With Mark. Um, would you play rugby for OAs or Hartford? Hartford. I'd neither, to be honest, but Hartford if I... Hang up the boots, would you? You'd hang up the boots, mate, before you had to do that, wouldn't you? Yeah, all day long, yeah. <laughs> Date night with the missus or beers with the boys? Beers with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah's not watching this then. <laughs> yeah, you get told off for that later, wouldn't you? Uh, and then lastly, <laughs> would you rather always be 10 minutes late or 20 minutes early? 20 minutes early. Good boy. Good boy, Stuart. Oh, thanks for running us through that, mate. I hope it Sorry? didn't drag you through too many memories there or whatever, but... Um, it's certainly good to hear you were prop I've heard stories you were a properly rugby player, but from the sound. No, of it, I wasn't. There no, was you've got myth. more you've you do you've got more of a, a rugby C V than most, I think, mate. So And you don't yeah, tell Just being in the right, right place at the right time. Yeah. Just uh, and yeah. I rode rode the wave and uh yeah, Just just nothing. having a mate that's going down to a Leicester Leicester Tigers trial and that's that's God's honest truth, yeah. Did you literally was that literally how it happened and you just sort of turned up? 100%. They wanted Simon Martin to go and play for Leicester, to join Leicester. And I just said, mate, I'll come down with you. So he's meeting the director of rugby there. And I just said, oh, can I come and try your 21s? He's like, yeah, just turn up Tuesday. And I did. And uh, yeah, I managed to get it. Leon Lloyd was in the 21s team yeah. briefly. And then, it's, uh, yeah, no, did all right. I um, My captaincy thingy, like you touched on the very quick story was, um, so I had... Previously, Charlie Dunsford was the manager of the first team under Fairsy's uh, captaincy, and like he he was unbelievably good and did so much to help us get promoted. And Corbs, who had Phil Corbin, who was the coach, who got us promoted, he very much had his way of playing rugby, which was tackle, kick, maul, penalty type thing. There was no chucking the ball about. Anyway, when I was captain, uh, we had Joel Ely as my manager. So that was had its a uh, few issues as well. And then the likes of Marcus, Tom, Alex Sockley, Jimmy Ray, Gibbo, people like that, these youngsters, 18, 19 year old, were tapping on the first team door. And we were still like more penalty kick. That's all we ever did. So I had a bit of a chat with the coach, said, look, you know, we need to change the way we play. We've got these superstars coming through and this isn't helping them. So anyway, we had a massive falling out. I spoke to the committee and said, look, you know, I'm going to step down as captain if he continues to be coach. And uh, 
They were like, okay, appreciate that. So we played Staines the last game of the season, got the boys around the huddle after we played and said, look, boys, just to let you know I'm stepping down as captain. They're like, obviously, there were tears in their eyes. And, uh, so I had to comfort a few of them. And then, and then literally, we walk over to Corbs. He gets the boys around and says, by the way, I'm stepping down as coach. And I kind of looked at everyone thinking... No one told me that, otherwise I would have stayed. So I kind of did like a one-year captaincy, but um, yeah, it was. Uh, I oh, loved right. it and I was totally honoured to do it. But uh, it did end a bit sooner than I'd uh, anticipated. But yeah, what was the what was the win ratio that season? Um, better than Fairsies. That's all you need to know. How many years <laughs> did Fairsy do? Three, I think. Three. Yeah, but uh, no. And the other sad thing was that when. Um, Corbs and Joel and I stepped down as uh, manager coach then Russell stepped in to be manager and so I, Charlie the year before who's just unbelievably good and then Russell who's an absolute legend and I was like if only one of those had hung around you know, to help me out I would have loved it but, hey, um, the socials must have been good under Joel though <laughs> yeah too good too good too good yeah well not when they start at 11 o'clock in the morning but, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He was he's, he was an absolute top bloke, and to be fair, Corbs Corbs was a brilliant, brilliant coach. He got us where what we needed to do, but to take us to the next level with the youngsters coming through, I think that's why yeah, yeah he moved on. Good stuff, nice one, good stuff. We'll have a quick chat about Six Nations. I know we've got to cast our mind back um, a week or so, rather than it being fresh in our brains. But obviously, England bounced back. Um, with, I guess, what is a dead cert win against Italy. So it was England 41, um, Italy 18, and man of the match, Anthony Watson. I thought, what do you think, Marcus? England back to to showing some form or just a bit of a, you know, obvious it's Italy, we're going to run some tries in? I still think, you know, 40 points on any international teams uh, is, is a good result. I think uh, everyone was just expecting us to put, like, I don't know, what, 100 points or something. I don't know, people, people seem still to get on our case. And obviously... Like I've said before, I think we're in a transitional stage. We're trying to find ourselves again as a as a team. But I think Mako and uh, Carl Sinclair back into the team. They just give you so much more go forward and just playing the ball at the line, tipping at the line. Uh, that they were a huge, huge difference. And I think yeah, Anthony Watson looked a lot sharper than he has done. And um, yeah, a, a, a better performance. But I think you know we still got a little way to go. Yeah, I think like in, you know England have got two top top wingers in in May and Watson, and it just showed that you know giving them the ball um, makes England look sharper at wide. And I think yeah, they had had a bit more power. I was pretty unimpressed with with Billy Vinopola again. Um, I, I'm I'm not sure why he keeps getting the opportunity when um, when there's a couple of others. There's definitely Earl, you know, that could be given an opportunity at eight against Italy. Um, but yeah, what about you, Stu? It's, I'm struggling with Elliot Daly at the moment. Yeah. Just, I know he's he's got the thunder boot, but he missed a, a shocking tackle against Italy down the touchline, you know, one and one, simple stuff. I, I I love Anthony Watson. I would love to see Anthony Watson play fullback. Yeah. And, uh, I just kind of, you're seeing how Stuart Hogg's playing at the moment. He's looking to beat, to take the defence on straight away with any loose kick. And Elliot Daly just doesn't offer anything in attack. I think he's too I don't know safe. What, don't know what Watson's stats would be, but he always certainly seems to beat the first defender, doesn't he? And he, he's always one and a half defenders, or or he takes two or three guys to, yeah. to tackle him. So, I mean, Mike Brown, for all his flaws, and you know, not everyone was his fan, but he used to run it back, you know, run it back hard and have a go. And I just think, you know, against these other teams, just hoofing it. Just doesn't do it for me. He's obviously being told it as well, and I think yeah. that, you know he's maybe going to end up a bit of a scapegoat. But but Eddie Jones seems to be sticking by him, so yeah. there it is. But big news, obviously Willis in just injury, which is obviously rubbish, rubbish to see on TV. But maybe a bit of a conversation. I mean, we touched on it there um, briefly earlier with the obviously ruck technique and probably what some of us stuff, what some of us have been taught through the years. Um, yeah, rule change is needed, or we is it a shock moment and everyone screams, but we'll forget about it next week. I don't. He's ridiculous, ridiculously flexible as well. Like, and yeah, because I 
he was on podcasts and he actually gets his leg, tucks it behind his head and stuff. And he gets in such a low position that, you know, it's very difficult to smash him. But I just, my heart goes out for him, especially with his previous injuries. Um, I'm not sure if he has torn his cruise shit or not, but um, it's just brutal. But in terms of the ruck laws, I'm not sure I know what they are in the first place. So I'm not sure I can comment there. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a tough one, really. I mean, you know, there's, there's two ways to get people out of rock at, the, rock at the moment. It's either smash them, isn't it? Or you've got to got to try and roll them out. And I think with how low people get to the ground, the smash um, isn't always the most successful way to do it, is it? So, But at the beginning of the season, weren't the refs quite hot on the whistle? So he got his hands on the ball and the referee was pinging people at the beginning of the season. They were like, straight away, uh, if they didn't... Um, let go of the ball in terms of the player on the floor that they get a penalty against them. And uh, whereas I think everyone's up in arms because there are so many penalties in the game, mm. now they're letting it be a bit longer now. And that's sadly why Jack hurts his knee. We're on first name terms with Jack, um, Jack West. <laughs> and um, yeah, and there's probably going to be a few more that happen as well. Yeah, maybe a bit of a bit of a grayer. Um, Scotland Wales, I guess, which is probably big game of the weekend. Obviously, Scotland twenty four, Wales twenty five. Um, man of the match was a very impressive Louis Rees Summit, who's just, I guess, sort of light, lighting up the the championship like he has been been the Premiership. Um, was that a red card for you, Scants? I literally I watched it back again today, and the angle I watched. I just didn't feel it was a red card. I think all he sort of had to aim at was that sort of shoulder. I think the thing that makes it a red was that he sort of tucked his arm again. I think players don't seem to be, obviously Omani the week before, don't seem to be getting away with with tucking their shoulder like that, which I think is right. You shouldn't get away with that. I think players are probably, you know, and the coaches will probably be talking to them now that if you're going to be trying to hit someone hard in that area, you've got to get your arms up yourself. Um, but, you know, they're trying to protect the players and any contact with the head is a red. But when, like Stu was saying, these players are in such a low position, their head is... That's the right, contact area, it's, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's right towards you. So if you can't smash them out of the way because you'll hit their head and you can't roll them or can't man- manoeuvre them, how, how are you meant to clear them out? Like, it, it's, it is a real yeah. tough one, I think. It is it's really, really tough. I think it's also... Tough. you've. Yeah, go on, Jay. Sorry. You've got like these 20 stone, 19, 20 stone guys running at you know reasonable pace, getting into position, and so, you know, the guy's head's dropping at the same time he's hitting it. And for them to adjust themselves at literally at last split second is is tough, but I'm with you two on that. Yeah. I think you've got to remember, you know, obviously back in some of Stu, Stu's days and times before then, you know, like people were just sort of walking into rucks. There was no kind of body height or whatever. It was all just, it was literally 10 blokes in a bit of a fist fight, wasn't it? And the ball chucks out, but obviously... The thing is, like, you, if you held on to the ball or you lay on the ground, didn't move, you got stamped on. So yeah. it was a kind of, you know, you if you're going to lie there, then you're going to get a good shoeing. So you kind of, the ball did come out, whereas now people are kind of grappling on it, playing with it, because they know they're not going to get a good shoeing. <laughs> Bring back the shoeing. Bring back the shoe in. So, yeah, I think the tricky <laughs> one. But, you know, I was a bit, do we think Scotland have maybe thrown away the chance at a championship there? I think, were they in in the running maybe? them? And, you know, I was thinking them and France before, before the weekend. But, you know, we're obviously looking at Wales and France, top of the table now. There's no way Wales are going to win it. They're, no. they're going to be spanked by France, I think. And I think England will be. I actually think, and this... This may not be a good thing. I think England may win the Six Nations and I think we'll, we'll beat Wales and Ireland and then just creep past France, but playing kind of boring rugby and it would be a shame because I think France definitely deserve it. But I just have that gut feeling similar to last year where we I lost the first know, game I, that we may... I don't know how many uh, French players are going to be available for their next game. It's going to be interesting. Oh, it, yeah, I've got to get dragged back COVID. to the... Oh, COVID. Has there been a COVID? Oh, uh, the coach, the coach. Yeah, DuPont. Yeah. DuPont's got it. Oh, blimey. I didn't... I, I saw the coach had been tested positive and they were isolated and I didn't know there were any more results. Yeah, there's been a few. 
<laughs> but then their C team's pretty good anyway, isn't it? So yeah. <laughs> they got so, depth. At least someone sent someone in the French camp with a bit of COVID. I bet it's, it's probably been some women knocking around, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, the final game um, I did watch, sort of exciting, bit dull. Um, Ireland 13, France 15, man of the match, Bryce Dunla. It's the fullbacks that seem to be sort of lighting up the championship at the moment. Um, just I think the French get it done. I think the first time they've beat Ireland in Dublin since 2011 was a stat I saw. Um, it was sort of a performance of a championship winning side, I guess. Mm. I think the back threes have been quite quite influential in this championship. I know we've talked about Hogg and Zamp, Reece um, and Obviously, Dulan, um, man of the match. Um, Teddy, whatever his name. Tom uh, Ad. Teddy Tom had doubled the week before. James Lowe, I think. And I think you mentioned him scant early on in our yeah, podcast. Great player. Bit of, a, bit of a bolter for the world, for the um, Lions, sorry. And I think he's an incredibly talented player and he can, he can welly a ball as well. I actually think he is average. Really? Oh, really? I, do. I don't rate him at all. I know he's got he's he's a big lump and he can hoof a ball, but he's a bit of a one trick pony. And you know he was so, he was receiving so many like balls in the middle of the pitch and hoofing because he's got a big boot. Mm. I mean, if that's my wing, if that's a Anthony Watson or a Reese Zamet, I want him going. Get you back yourself. Have a run. I think. I, he, I think. I think he does that as well, though. To me, he seems to be like Ireland's only attacking threat at the moment. Yeah, you know, possibly. Yeah, a few people over, and he's got like maybe maybe people are going to work him out. You know, people yeah. are going to work out that he's always going to try and kick, and he might come undone. But yeah, he's cer- certainly a big, strong boy. But yeah, not not too much. Obviously, France getting the job done. I think Ireland seem seem a bit stagnant. I know. I think soon in the media this week they're sort of talking about. I know they weren't starting against France, but Murray and Sexton seem to be sort of on their way out and whether whether Farrell should just drop them out of the picture now or sort of keep playing along with them, um, considering that the guy's on their way out of the career, I don't know. Um, Stewie, any run for Lions watch for you, mate, over the first two weeks? Any any bolters or any, any names in the hat for the Lions? If we were to pick the Lions team tomorrow, I would have Ali Price, the Scottish scrum half, mm. as my nine. I just, I think to beat the South Africans, you've got to move the pack about because they're such massive units and he has got tempo and he just whizzes around and gets the ball away from the, the base quickly. And uh, I think he's he's been shy. Obviously, you've got the the, the Reese, um, I always get his name, where's it? Zamet. Zamet. He's like, we all know him, like everyone's talking about him and Tiger Furlong like had what 20 minutes, he looked pretty special. But mm. the ones that I think are a bit left field, I think Ali Price would be one of them, and he's mm. uh, he's definitely shining. He'd be my nine. Anyone else for you, Scanty? Last week? Um I think the Scott Win, Win Jones, Win Jones, I like him. Nah, well oh, the prop, the prop, yeah. yeah. Oh. Hamish Watson, Hamish Watson, the Scottish flanker, that nutty haircut. Seems to play play pretty hard. I know back row is pretty stacked up, but um, I think he's a good shout. Um, who was back for Wales? Was it Tiprick that was back? Yeah. Oh, um, Lydia had a had a done his yeah, ACL. Yeah, he's isn't he? done his crew shit, hasn't he? Has he? He's, he's, yeah, it's a shame that. But yeah, Redpath as well. Obviously, he didn't play last week, but he was he was amazing against England. Mm-hmm. Um, Top stuff. All right, nice one. We'll get excited about next week's games. Who, who have England got next week? Wales, Wales away. Oh, roof closed, roof open. Yeah, uh, big crowd. Doesn't matter, no <laughs> fans. Doesn't At least we don't have to... Sleep. Yeah, you won't get the nice Welsh birds in the crowd, though, that there was pan to in the anthem, were you? <laughs> Welsh, Welsh blondies. Scan, should we You've finish with the... Of makeup on. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Should we it's finish not... with the question for uh, Stewie? Yes. Well, we're come. Yeah, we're getting to the end of the podcast. So, last little bit for you, Stu. Do you want to fire away, Marcus? This is your little bit. Yeah. So uh, again, like, like we asked Sam last week, what's your what's your best or what's your go to excuse, Stewie, to allow you a couple more beers at the club? Um. <laughs> right. You both know me quite well. I don't think I need an excuse to tell Hannah 
she's I've been with her since I was like pretty 18 so she's kind of used to it I get home when I get home um but I've, I've probably used that dad's up the club and um that he's a bit lonely no friends so I should really stay up there with him <laughs> Normally he's gone. You don't he's even probably gone by then anyway. Or, or if he is there, you're not even talking to him anyway, are no, you? No, not at all. <laughs> you left him, left him in the back while with his mates. The, an excuse to leave the club because we had um, the minis fun day a couple of years ago. And um, obviously it was the last day of the, last, um, day of the season and uh, parents are buying us the odd pints and stuff, which is very kind of them. Then... It was about one o'clock and someone pegged me. I'm thinking, right, this is a minis fun day. And in the club, I think it was Dave Walker or someone like that, pegged me. And I started trying, you know, take the peg, whatever. And I thought, it's a joke, isn't it? So anyway, they pegged me. So I had to neck a pint. Then I thought, gave them the peg back. Right, yeah, good one, lads. They pegged me four times in about an hour. And so I did four pints on top of the four or five pints I had anyway. It was about four o'clock daylight, nice sunny day. I couldn't walk. I've got my family with me. I'm all over the shop, just falling over, having an argument with Hannah because I wanted to go down to the cricket club to carry on. And she was like, no, you need to come home. And yeah, so my, my it was videoed as well where I'm just stumbling all over the shop. But yeah, that was an excuse to leave the club. But to stay at the club, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't really need one. It's my second home. Second home. You are, it's every Saturday and Sunday, isn't it, for you, mate, really? It is, yeah. yeah. Although, <laughs> I can't get too drunk on a Saturday now because we did have a match with the minis. I think this is when they are under eights. And I, I, I always kneeled down, so I'm talking to the kids at eye level. <laughs> and I knelt down and said, right, boys, blah, 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 blah. And one of the lads went, oh, my God, your breath stinks. <laughs> <laughs> and I literally buckled over, went to the parents' and you know, it's then we've got a chewing gum, but I thought, you know, hanging the next day, reeking yeah. the beer is probably not a good thing. Got be done. No, you've got to be sober, sober for coaching the kids, mate, if you're imparting your wisdom onto them, mate. That that yeah. doesn't look blurring any more than it might be. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Stu. Um, no, thank you very we, much. For I think me. we've managed to keep it to about 50 minutes, maybe. So we're on, yeah. we're, we're bang on with. With, with last week's and the weeks before but that's been great mate it's been good to hear about your rugby story um, and I hope boys. we haven't tried to wind you up or chuck too much about your way I don't think we have it's been pretty clean um, good stuff so. story, yeah. no cheers boys um, great idea with the podcast it's um, yeah because I'm a bit of a Nors and listen to the, rub, the other rugby podcast, but this is good, boys. And just this is your going. favorite one. We're better than Haskell, we're better than Goody. I don't know who else does one, definitely up. better. And just so, oh, yeah. is it can you purchase it? Purchase it on Apple yet? No, no, no we'll free YouTube things. We're going on YouTube because if you get a certain number of views, you get money for ads and things. So, um, good stuff. You know, right, yeah, well done, boys. Is, Thanks. Is for there any me. quick, quick last That's question right. for you? Go. Is there any guests you want to see? Who do you want to see? We've got. A, we haven't got anyone chosen for for our next one. I don't know if there's anyone you you might like to see on the podcast. I think Frank would be comedy gold, but then at the same time a little bit boring. So just talk rugby, 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 rugby. I know this is a rugby podcast, but. It would just hit so much detail. Is there any any current players, any current first team players you think might be good? Or you'd like to hear from? Yes, I'll message you behind the scenes. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. I like it. We yeah, keep exactly. it secret. That's, yeah. Okay. But yeah, good be stuff. good, be safe, boys. Thanks for yeah. having me. Thanks everyone. Please tune in. Uh it'll be now two weeks, two weeks from now. This is gonna go out tomorrow night, which is Monday. Uh thanks for watching. We'll see you all soon. Good boys. Wave us out, Steve. Got to wave wave everyone out.